up on WAC Football Friday, the most anticipated game in WAC football so far this season. The battle of the Piney Woods between Sam Houston and Stephen F. Austin. We talked with Bearcats head coach Casey Keeler. I said, supposedly some guy's tweeting at me. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't check. I don't look. I don't care. That's not the world I live in. I live, I'm, trying, I'm a football coach. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to go win a football game. I'm not worried about tweeting and doing that nonsense. Plus, Abilene Christian makes some history and some more spectacular plays. That's all ahead on WAC Football Friday. <laughs> Welcome to WAC Football Friday. I'm Eric Danner. This week features one of the most historic games in WAC football this season, a rivalry that goes back to the 1920s between Stephen F. Austin and Sam Houston. This game will be played at NRG Stadium in Houston, the home of the Houston Texans. This will be the 11th straight matchup between these teams in H-Town. This rivalry goes all the way back to 1923. The Bearcats and Lumberjacks have played 95 times, with Sam Houston coming out on top in 57 of those matchups. The two teams did not play last year, SFA playing a fall schedule, while Sam Houston played in the spring. This was the first time these two teams had not played in a season since World War II. The Bearcats have won the past nine meetings. The Lumberjacks' last victory was in 2010. We talked with coaches and players from both teams at the WAC Football Preview about what this game means for both schools. Such a great rivalry. Uh, I remember my first year and uh, we were fortunate enough to win that game. I remember walking off the field with my athletic director, Bobby Williams, and I said, you didn't explain the intensity that we were going to feel uh, this Saturday afternoon. I said, you sort of downplayed it. Oh, we always look forward to that one. That one's circled on everybody's calendar, whether you're a player, coach, fan, alumni. Uh, that's, that's why it's such a marquee game and, and played there at NRG and you know, have 30, 40,000 people there. The atmosphere is crazy. You know, we ride in, um, see all the alumni and uh, get into the NRG stadium. And when playing that game, is it's tough, uh, you know. For four hours, we hate each other. Sam Houston, you know, they're the team to beat right now. Everybody in the nation thinks that or knows that, you know, they're the national champions, but that's just a good challenge for us. It's exciting. Um, the rivalry is really deep. Um, they're a good football team. They're getting better every year. So that's a game that we look forward to and, and love the atmosphere. We love how, how, uh, how many people get out there and the exposure we get. So we're excited to go out there and play them again. It's going to be very exciting. We missed it. We wish we could have played them last year, but they played in the spring, and it is what it is. But we're looking forward to it, get some revenge on them. We haven't won in about eight or nine years, so we look forward to changing that this year. I try to save hate for, like, world hunger and, and you know, those kind of things. But for about four hours on a Saturday afternoon, Sam Houston State and, and SFA hate each other. I think uh, we'll look up October 2nd. That, that won't just be a, a marquee game for the conference. I think it has a chance to be a, a marquee game across the country. Number one ranked and undefeated Sam Houston taking on 3-1 and one Stephen F. Austin. This is a 4 p.m. kickoff Central Time and will be on Bally's in the Houston area and ESPN Plus digitally. Abilene Christian has won three games in a row. This week, the Wildcats play their first game in the AQ7. ACU hosting Central Arkansas at 6 Central. The Bears are just outside of the AFCA FCS Top 25. Tarleton makes the trip to Eastern Kentucky. EKU is receiving votes in the coaches' poll. That is a 3 p.m. Eastern time kickoff. And Dixie State plays their third-ranked team in a row at number three-ranked South Dakota State. That's at 6 Central. All those games are on ESPN+. Coming up next with the Battle of the Piney Woods this week, we talk with Sam Houston head coach Casey Keeler. Coming up after the break. <music> WAC, we value sportsmanship on the field and in the stands. We take pride in playing fair and being honest. We honor the game by showing respect for our opponents, the officials, the fans, and our team. Great sportsmanship is about taking ownership after a loss and being humble after a win. We want you to team up with us by staying positive on the sideline. Because great sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are, are the Western Athletic Conference.
Welcome back to Watch Football Friday. Eric Danner now joined by Casey Keeler, the head coach at Sam Houston. Coach, welcome to the show. Eric, thank you. Doing great. How's, how's it going with you? Do, doing great, Coach. Hey, I appreciate you coming on. I know a very busy week uh, for you guys with the Battle of the Piney Woods. Before we get to that, kind of give me an assessment of how your team's looking so far this year. 3-0, and number one in the country. I can't imagine a lot of things you'd want to fix, but uh, I, I know coaches are a little different that way. You know, we, we played Central Arkansas last week, and, and I told the team uh, post, you know, post game, I said, if you'd have told me we were going to beat Central Arkansas in Conway by 10, you know, I would have been jumping up and down. You know, I mean, we're three and six all time on the stripes. Um, they're usually a great football team, and it's always a tough place to play. And, you know, so we should be excited. We beat them by 10, but we just played a little sloppy. Gave up a touchdown at the end of the half, touchdown at the end of the game, you know, inside the five twice, uh, where we, you know, swaggle in the, called in the wrong play. And for first and goal from the one now becomes a second and five for the five when you have to kick a field goal. So it's a game that we thought we should have won made by 30. And that's that's pretty impressive against as good a football team as, as Central Arc. So we, we have a talented football team. But my disappointment was we just didn't play clean enough. Um, and that's been constant, the constant theme. I said, I don't think we lose a whole lot of games if we play clean. And so we need to clean some of those things up. So happy with where we are, 3-0. Um, you know, had to go on the road to Northern Arizona, play at the altitude uh, to start the season off. And, uh, you know, Southeast Missouri State's a good, solid football team. Uh, got them at our place. So I think, you know, we played three competitive teams, and I like how we fared so far. Coach, I know when we talked to you back at the WAC football preview, you wanted to have some built-in buys. And you, you have had a buy this uh, so far this season. And part of that was because of playing in the spring. It, se it seemed like you guys had quite a spring in your step after that bye week this, this past week against Central Arkansas. Oh, and it was a physical game, too. I, I think we really needed that bye going into Central Arkansas because, you know, it, it was a lot of hitting going on in that game. And then we get home at, you know, 4 in the morning uh, or 5 in the morning from, from, from that long bus trip. And fortunately, thank you to Central Arkansas. We played the game at 4 not at six. And that was, you know, I mean, we, we try to work with each other. And that's the great thing about college football. You know, you, everyone wants a home field advantage, but at the same time, if you can work with the team and they were scheduled for six o'clock and they understood us getting back so late would put us in harm's way. And so they moved it to four. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's, um, it, it's a great group I have coming back. And I think we've kind of, kind of just taken up from where we left off. Um, and, you know, my whole thing is just trying to keep us, you know, moving forward, with trying to play cleaner. On paper, Eric, I think we're as good, if not better, than we were last year. Um, the whole key is trying to limit some of those mistakes uh, that we've made early in the season and try to play cleaner. Because later in the season, in a weekend like this against you know, SFA, a rivalry game, they'll come in back and bite you pretty bad if you don't play clean. Yeah, well, one of those guys looking good on paper and in person is quarterback Eric Schmidt our Ticket Smarter Offensive Player of the Week. Coach, we, we knew he was a great runner, but I, I've but watched all your games so far this year. He's got quite an arm, too. He, he's he's quite a quarterback. He really does. You know, when we got him, you know, a lot of people were, were recruiting him as a wide receiver. And we said, no, we're taking him as a quarterback. And, and we knew he was a magician when he got out on the edge with his ability to pull the ball down and run and throw from all different angles and, and throwing right, throwing left. It doesn't really bother him. The thing that he's done, along with working with my offensive coordinator, Ryan Cardi, is he's become a better pocket passer. And that was the difference last year for him, becoming a better pocket passer. And I think he's even moved it to a higher level this year already. So, you know, we knew there was going to be some progression with him. We knew that you're going to get an elite athlete on the edge, be able to throw and, and, and run. But now could you also make him a pocket passer? And I think we've done that, especially with the athletes, Eric, that we can put on the perimeter. You know, Jaquez Azard, uh, Ife Day, um, Cody Crest. I mean, we got some wide receivers that are really pretty special. Then you take a guy like Noah Smith and can bring him out of the backfield. I mean, you know, there's a lot of weapons there. And, you know, Eric has really learned how to go through his reads, understand the progressions. And if it's not there, the great thing is, you know, he pulls it down and, and gets positive yards. Coach Geeler, it's also not bad when you can turn around and hand the ball off to Ramon Jefferson. He has 400 yards in the first three games, top five in the nation, only having played three games in rushing. He, he seems to have taken another step this year as well. He, he has. And, and, you know, I, I think um, if you look at the yards per carry, he probably is number one in the country. I mean, you know, we really have not 
overloaded him workload wise because we, we use uh, uh, Noah Smith a whole lot also. But uh, the, the unique thing with Ramon is I mean, he's a north south kid that can stop in a dime, make a move and get right back to 100 percent, you know, 100 percent speed uh, in, in a couple steps. So not only can he run over you, he can make you miss. And then when he gets in the second level, he's a guy that can run away from you. So great having a home run threat every time he touches the ball. Uh, every every game he has at least uh, one or two big runs those 15 to 25 yard uh, explosive plays that you need in your run game and uh, you know he's been one of the the great um, stories of this early early uh, fall season so far how well he's played doesn't surprise us at all but maybe surprise some people around the country well another great story coming up this Saturday coach the battle of the piney woods the oldest college rivalry in the state of Texas. We talked a little bit about it at the WAC football preview day, but tell us what, what this is like. What does this mean for Sam Houston when you line up against Stephen F. Austin? Yeah, you know, I always tell the story that when I first got here, they you know told me a little bit about this SFA game and they were purple. We don't like purple and, you know, okay. And I remember very vividly walking off the field that very first year with Bobby Williams and I was like, you didn't do this game justice. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> I mean, you can feel the energy in the stadium. Our fans do not like their fans. Our alums do not like their alums. Our players do not like for, – for four hours on a Saturday afternoon, it's pretty intense now. Um, but we have great respect for them. Uh, it, it's, you know, so many commonalities and so many crossovers in terms of, you know, the kids we recruit – um, you know, alums that work in the business world or in the, the education world. I mean, they're they're all making bets with each other, you know. So uh, it's a lot of fun. And, and it's a great game. It'll be a great crowd. Uh, and if they're not nationally ranked, they should be nationally ranked because they've come, they've had a great start to the season. And, uh, you know, I mean, Colby's done a great job with that program. Yeah, SFA comes in with a three and one record. They're only lost to Texas Tech in a game. Arguably, they, they could have won. What have you seen on game film from the Lumberjacks, Coach? Yeah, really aggressive defensively. I mean, to a level that I can't – I mean, you're thinking Buddy Ryan years in terms of aggressive. They will come after you. Now, they will misfit a run, and, you know, you can pop a big one on them every now and then, but their mindset is they're going to get to you more than you get to them. So really impressed with that. Special teams have been really impressive too. I mean, I just love how hard they play in special teams. That kickoff coverage team is really impressive. And that's, I love to watch those kind of things because you kind of get a feel for, you know, the mentality of the program. They have a great quarterback. And, you know, they lost some running backs. So I think that's hurt their running game a little bit, but they do such a great job with their screen game. So it's not all, okay, hey, we can't run the ball on you. We're going to force the ball downfield because most people struggle running against us just with how good our defensive front is and how we are designed as a defense is typically a take take the runaway first to try to make you one dimensional, but they will find creative ways in their screen game to like, okay, we might not be able to run the ball at you, but we're not going to sit there trying to throw the ball deep on you all day. We're going to kind of dink and dunk you different ways. So they're really well coached. I think, I think um, Colby's got in their head a culture uh, and, and this is a game I know they're really excited about just like our kids are really excited about. With the game being at Energy Stadium in Houston, home of the Houston Texans, how does your routine change this week, Coach? Do you change anything at all? Obviously, there's a lot more hype around it. You're probably doing more interviews, those kind of things. But how does the routine change? Well, you know, just sometimes there's some reminders for the players. Like I told about social media. I said, listen, I said, supposedly some guy's tweeting at me. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't check. I don't look. I don't care. That's not the world I live in. I will, I'm trying, I'm a football coach. I'm trying to, I'm trying to go win a football game. I'm not worried about tweeting and doing that nonsense. So I think sometimes it's just the head coach has to remind them, like, don't get caught up with the minutia and you can get caught up with the minutia in a game like this. And I think that's, you know, what SFA wants to kind of draw us into and we're not going to be drawn into it. So, you know, we've talked to our kids about social media. We've talked to them about, how when they make a play, they go find their teammates because it's so easy. There's going to be so much talking going on. There's a lot of ch chippiness. You can easily get caught up in the moment. And all of a sudden, you put yourself in harm's way, and there's a 15-yard penalty. And, and, and one play can change a game. And one drive can, you know, be the difference between up by three or down by four. You know, so you can't, you can't have that play that extends someone's drive or stops you from driving the ball. And so we talk a lot about just, you know, going and playing the game, 
and just enjoy the atmosphere, but let's not get caught up with the nonsense that sometimes can happen in a rivalry game. Coach, with the COVID this past year and SFA played in the fall, of course, you played in the spring and won the national championship there. No game last year. Is there more anticipation this year maybe than the, the other games that you faced against Stephen F. Austin? Yeah, I don't know if you can bring any more anticipation to this game. I just don't know if it's possible. Even if we're 4-0, they're 0-4, they're and and vice versa. We're 0-4 and, and they're 4-0. I mean, it's just the nature of this game. And again, it's just because the alums and, and the, the players on the rosters, they all know each other. And it's a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's the oldest rivalry in the state of Texas. And uh, like I said, when you're on that sideline, you can feel the energy coming from the, the stands in terms of uh, how important this game is for each university. So it's awesome playing in games like that. And I'm excited for our players to have a, a NFL atmosphere in terms of, you know, you've got a, such a great facility. The Texans take care of us uh, like this, a bowl game. And uh, it could be a great crowd there and you're playing a great opponent. So this is what college football is all about right here. We can't wait to see it, Coach. It's going to be 4 o'clock Central Time. Valley's on the, uh, in the Houston area and then ESPN Plus around the country. We can't wait to watch it. Thanks for taking some time out, Coach. Good luck this week. Thanks so much, Eric. That is Casey Keeler, the head football coach at Sam Houston. We'll be right back. back to WAC Football Friday. Abilene Christian made some history this past week. The Wildcats beating Lamar for the first time since 1970. ACU quarterback Stone Earl tossing three more touchdown passes all in the first half. Earl leads the WAC with 11 this season. The Wildcats also rushing for 274 yards. That includes this Jeremiah Dobbins 35-yard score in the third quarter. Abilene Christian wins big 56 to nothing. Same teams will play in Abilene on October 16th. In Conway, Arkansas, number one, Sam Houston playing at number 25, Central Arkansas. Bearcats QB Eric Schmidt was tossing dimes. This 45-yard TD to Jaquez Ezard starts the scoring. Schmidt had four touchdown passes on the day and is named Ticket Smarter Offensive Player of the Week. Kicker Seth Morgan connects on three field goals. Morgan picks up his second Ticket Smarter Special Teams Player of the Week. Sam Houston wins 45 to 35. In Stephenville, Texas, Tarleton hosting New Mexico Highlands. Check out the concentration by wide receiver Tariq Bitson. He had four catches on the day for 135 yards. Freshman defensive back Greg Eggleston Jr. picks off two passes on the day. He is named Ticket Smarter Defensive Player of the Week. Texans roll over the Cowboys 40 to 21. Stephen F. Austin at home against Lincoln Special Teams for the Lumberjacks score two touchdowns on the day. Takai Lloyd on this blocked punt made it 24 to nothing in the first quarter. Later, it's Leonard Lemons going 67 yards on the return. SFA gets the victory 61 to 13. That does it for this episode of WAC Football Friday. Make sure to check out all the games this Saturday, then check back again next WAC Football Friday. <laughs>